Welcome to the Footy Show here on Patreon, me and Ped. Ready to get into all things footy. Just have you been? Just footy. Just what do you mean, how have I been? I'm just asking you, are you? I didn't see you yesterday. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I know you've done the watch along. You've done the watch along on your own. I did, it, boss. The I was just like talking to all the, all the blues through the screen. The medium of screen. It's weird, it's weird, but it's fun at the same time. I watched it and you did look a bit weird, but then you kind of got into it and then you just looked like you were sat in your bills and yours. Really. Yeah, you to be match. honest, I could have just done that. Just but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I could have just... It's like, yeah. Yeah. The worst thing about it was because I was like on my own, I couldn't like just get up and go and get a drink. Yeah. I was like, I've got to wait here till <laughs> till was good. Till there's a break. Well, well done, mate. Well done. That kind well of done. Thing. I'm sure all of our pigs and, and everybody else. Loved I just it. love the comments when you see people like on the tr- people are actually watching him watching the match. It's like yeah, that would have only been the other one, mate. No, it doesn't bother me. It makes me laugh. It's like saying people watch him talking about footy. You pe- not being funny, but people do it every single Saturday. Do you watch on Saturday, Sky every, yeah. every week, yeah. every single week. Watching people who have no interest in everything, but yeah. they still talk listen. about footy. So what's the, what's the difference? At least, at least we have got a passion and we want to, you know. So there you go. Out there. All right, what's let's get on there. Let's tell get it, into it. Tell it text with my face. There you go. Terrible. Terrible. Although I, I don't sell all of these. I can say yeah. All of these. Get it now. Hundred quid. Mr. the page. You're gonna have to go back <laughs> all the way round. What, what, what number was it on? Oh, three of twenty nine. No, <laughs> no. Anyway, let's go on. Let's move on. First story. Want to talk about Alvaro Morata? Okay. He's he's landed in England. He's landed at Heathrow. We knew. One, we we thought he was coming to England. Yeah. One of the two <laughs> centre forwards on sale this summer. Exactly. It's absolutely mad, isn't it? Is it? If you're a, if you're Conti. Do you, just on the Lukaku yeah. thing because it was it's come out I don't know how, how accurate this is because obviously I, I don't but there was strong talk that they they wanted Emanalo wanted Lukaku and Conte wanted yeah. Morata that's what has been kicked around don't yeah. know how true it is and it's can't, it looked like Lukaku was going to be their, mm. their number one but how it's played out it now looks like Morata, Conte's actually got the fella he wanted all along mm. But the top, to me, the, the two two different, different players. Strikers. And and actually, Morata is more of what Chelsea need. Yeah, like Haku is not what Chelsea. I, I've been saying this. We've been saying it for mm-hmm. for months, and it wasn't like a thing like, oh, Chelsea don't look at Lukaku. He's not a Chelsea player. No. He doesn't no. play in the style. And unless they were going to completely change the style, which would be mad. Which would be mad because he's just under the league. Okay, you can have two kinds of styles, but they're losing cost there. So you, what you you do is you say, well, if we're losing losing that asset, we need to replace that asset and then maybe look for someone else. Morata will fit Chelsea a lot better than Lukaku will. Mm-hmm. Lukaku fits more into Man United's style because of the runners and because because Man United actually are very good at getting um, players wide. They have done for years and getting the ball in front of a centre forward mm-hmm. and that's where Lukaku is at his very best he'll and that's that. why he'll score a lot of goals yeah. because if the ball's in front of him. He's got. He's he, he's he's, fine, he's the he? best. He's the best around. But Chelsea love having a, a player who drops into midfield, but back to goal, holds it up, gets it into a hazard, spins, and then gets back into the box. That's what. You, so it's worked out perfectly for both clubs. But the weird thing is, is the power thing. It's at Chelsea now. Um, Conte signed the contract this week, yeah. and he hasn't signed an, an extension. He has not signed an extension. Loads of people are like, oh, sure. It was like pushed as like he, he, all his problems were over. He's just been given more money. He, his contract is exactly the same length. He's just been given just more him a money. Better contract, exactly, basically. exactly. So that basically says to him, uh, basically says to me, listen, just shut up and do your job, and he's more money for doing it. But he, but he, that doesn't mean he's staying any longer. It's important to them though, isn't it? Because where did he, if they get rid of him, where did he go then? He start looking around and going, right, who's the next? Because who is the next shiny thing after Conte? Allegri. Allegri. But, the, but it's kind of like that's Chelsea though isn't yeah, it it's yeah. not we, we sit here and we worry as Evertonians about losing Koeman and who's next but I suppose for a long time we worried about losing players and who was next and we've mm. sort of forgotten about that now so if you're a Chelsea fan and you've been used to this for 10-15 years you know there's a structure in place you know you've got you've, got, you've had what we are suddenly starting to see at Everton a structure that goes behind the manager yeah, yeah. and you know you've got an owner who although uh, 15 years ago we were getting told by all them sundry them next door them them next door or he'll leave and he'll he'll leave his debt ridden and all that well he hasn't left he hasn't left number one and number two he's put a structure in place that if he if he does not leave but if 
you know, it, the day he, his money stops being pumped into Chelsea, they have got a viable way of surviving on their own because they have to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No one says that. No, Chelsea don't exactly go out there and spend loads of money just like through his checkbook. Now it all comes through a big cycle mm. of of uh, how they do business. And I suppose the key thing he, he's done is their brand, isn't it? Their brand yeah. now, from when he took over to now, is incredible. Yeah, they've, they've exactly. Got, so they're, often they're self-sufficient now. Mm. They're getting a new, they're rebuilding Stamford Bridge into this new, new like mecca of a stadium, and they can, they can live. <laughs> they can, they don't have to worry because mm. I, I think what the thing is is if Conte, the day Conte leaves, and I think he'll leave when his contract finishes. Mm. I don't think he really wants to be in this country. I think he wants to be Italians. Are, I mean, we've seen Bonucci go to AC Milan today, right? And everyone's saying, why isn't he come to England or why isn't? He? Because that's so, uh, they're happy in their yeah, country, yeah. and I think Conte will be happy going back to it. Like we like our players yeah. are here. A lot of our players don't go anywhere really, do they? they, they don't. They just bounce between teams. Don't go anywhere. So I think when his contacts up, they'll just go. Well, who's the new shining one at the moment? Is it Allegri? Is it? It, it might be. Um, yeah, then Rodgers. Possibly. By then, it might be. Um, it might be what's his name at uh, at, at Paris Saint Germain. Emery. Emery might be might be the next might be man. the next one. This like Paris Saint Germain might, might be a sort of bit, stepping stone. I mean, they've got a structure. It seems to work, and they don't seem to lose any sleep over it. Back on Morata then. Go on. <clears throat> He's a good player, isn't he? Conte's had them before. Mm. I think he'll do well there. I think he'll do well a lot better at Chelsea than he would have done at Man United. Okay. Because I don't think, and this will sound stupid, I don't think his goals will be as important to Chelsea as they will be to Man United. I think. Right, I think he'll score goals. Don't get me wrong, but I think the fact that the way he bring way he plays helps other pe- people. I think he'll get more goals in this country because the defenses are not as tight no, as he's been like, used yeah, to. Yeah. Um, you know, but he scored he scored a lot of goals when he was at Juventus. Doesn't didn't get the chances at Milan at Madrid. Sorry, obviously uh, the way the way they are, but he still scored goals and he will score goals. I just don't think I don't think his goals will be as important, even though Costa. Scored what like nine? I no, think he scored 18, 19. Uh, 19. He, could, he could see him getting 15, 16. Yeah, no, I, 18, I think I, I just think that the way he <clears> plays <throat> will be more important to bringing all the players in. And I suppose, in some respects, we you know Costa's on his way out at the, the party and in an Atletico Madrid chair first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. Berserk. Yeah, it's not it's not professional behaviour, is it? No, but I think he probably feels. That, but he's got to go back there, isn't he? Let's be honest. So it's a bit mad. Um, but I think. They, it might improve Chelsea not having the distraction of Costa yeah, it's, in a game because you, they're all, you know that he's on the he plays on the edge Costa doesn't he? So I wonder if having someone who'll just get on with his game might help the team. But it is, I think it does all. The, 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 there's always a time and a place for a little bit of snidness though, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? There is always yeah, a time and a place, and if he keeps defenders occupied, I think that's what's so good mm, about Costa. He's yeah, horrible. He he's hot. And like, the the year before last. That bubbled over, and every game he was getting yeah, into yeah, trouble. Yeah. And this season, he sort of calmed down and started. And he st- but he still got a bit of devilment in it, and that's I, I like that. I like that about centre forward. Surprised no Premier League club went for him, or has gone for him rather. No, because no. football is a village, yeah. and they'll they'll all yeah, number one. They'll all know <clears throat> that he, where where he wants to go, um, and and number two, they'll all probably think, nah. <laughs> okay, well that seamlessly brings me on to the village of Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a report saying that they're gonna uh, Barcelona gonna accept the hundred and ninety six million pound. Know. Well, the reports coming out today are the fed up with Neymar and his partying and his and his bad boy image and everything else. And if you're gonna replace him with Coutinho and Mbappe. <laughs> okay, bye. That's that's the thing. That's the the, the big wouldn't, wouldn't the big that story. wouldn't that wouldn't that upset. Wouldn't that upset Messi and Suarez if they lose somebody they love playing football with and also seem to have, you know, a really good relationship? Well, I suppose the flip side to it, because I heard, heard this argument this week as well about Neymar <clears throat> coming to the mm-hmm. stage where he's he's never going to be the number one figure at well, Barcelona. Surely, because he's, isn't he, well, how old is he? 24. Yeah. So he'll outlast the other two. Well, he, yeah, but it's our lot. He's at 24 now, mm. isn't he? He's going back. He's playing second fiddle to a Brazilian mm. and a Uruguayan. Sorry, Argentinian, Argentinian and a Uruguayan. So, 
you know, he could go to PSG and be the big. Well, he's the he will be well, the main. Well, just before sort of PSG. I mean, well, would you rather be? You know, would you rather be sort of? He's not a small fish, but would you rather be part of Barcel like part of Barcelona, or be the big fish at a Paris Saint Germain? Uh, well, me personally, I think I'd rather play with the other two because you want to play with good players, don't you? Mm. But some people might be thinking, well, I can go and be the flag bearer here. Mm. Do you want to get ridiculous amounts of oh, money? Not that he needs just, it, but he's. Well, I mean, the way I, I've heard, uh, Barcelona are not in a good place by the sounds mm. of it. The people, if you listen to people who used to run the club, they feel like the club is getting run in a really bad way. Yeah. Like, it's gone away from like it used to be about running the club I mean don't forget this is a club that only didn't have a shirt sponsor till about five years ago yeah, yeah. right and they've gone from being a club that was about the community that was bringing money in because it was Barcelona and now it's leaving the community behind and it's all about making money and it's happened very very quickly mm-hmm. now a lot of people say well they have to do that because they have to keep up with the world but they were doing things quite well they were they yeah. were they were community based first mm. and the money was coming anyway and, and, and the it, world was struggling to keep up with them and so a lot of people were so a lot of the and i don't know if it's bitterness or oh but these were people who were running the club but when it was sort of when it was re, when it was the just you could you know around 2000 and 10 11 tw- when they were just the greatest for me it's the greatest probably the greatest team ever yeah that team which well, up, certainly up there. well I, for me i think it's the greatest team ever okay. with javi and messi and uh iniesta and um you know it was just it was just unbelievable um it was it was just you know it was just fantastic Total football weren't they? Pure out the back it was just it was just unbelievable um and it's it's gone away from that and and i think that's that's the worry so and look at the manager situation the way it's gone as well they've got someone who's pretty much an unknown mm-hmm. you know in world football i mean I, know, I don't know whether that how much that means but um it's an interesting one but for neymar himself or certainly Paris saint germain i think it's really interesting Paris saint germain need to 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 buy an absolute star yeah. okay when they had slatan slatan was like Paris saint germain version one of the new yeah, regime yeah, yeah. and it was working brilliantly and when it, you know last year they didn't win the league they stumbled a little bit without him and they've bought lots of good players don't get me wrong and they're sort of bit trying to build that team up again but I, I think the Champions League showed for them beating Barcelona 4-0 and then getting that you know humiliating defeat to go out and start they did away encapsulates where Palace Saint-Germain are and they do need a big player to take them to the next level I mean don't get me wrong they're very very close but they're sort of in at the moment I'd say they're in like a tier two of yeah, the teams in the world yeah. and if they want to break into that with that top tier and be a Champions League semi-finalist and a Champions League finalist they need someone like Neymar and, and he would be loved and his skills would be appreciated in, in the French League um, and and you know it's funny because I've been to Paris and I've been to see Paris Saint-Germain and I went to see Paris Saint-Germain before the money arrived and the when they were struggling for rele- relegation, <clears throat> and the, the 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 fans were amazing, like the real this was real the real fans were there, and they were absolutely amazing. And so the, it was all there. They're not a team that's been made because of the money. They they've got the potential, Palace, to be anything they want. Because the reason why the owners bought it is because they've got no teams. Like some of one of the biggest clubs, the uh, biggest cities in the world, they haven't got any other teams near them. They've got apparently they've got the uh, ability to attract ten million fans, mm. and it's funny because if you go to Paris and you go on a sports shop, you can get like Marseille tops and things like that. Because for a long time, Paris Saint Germain was just seen as this small provisional yeah, club. Yeah. Okay, they were they won leagues and stuff, but they only really came into being in the seventies. Whereas Marseille are like the the, the 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 national, like the Man United yeah, or yeah. the Juventus, Sheena, the they are they are the national, the, the national the, club. Yeah. So so Paris have still got a long way to go to convince people in Paris mm. that they are the club. So yeah, yeah. bringing in someone like Neymar would automatically, and we felt the effects yeah. in the last week. You know what? Right, it's dead weird because you know we felt the effects in the last week of Binger and Rooney, and suddenly thinking. Thinking because we think of your, you think of your own club, and you think, oh, we're we're in the Premier League, so automatically we're a big club and all that. But 
if you've got a player that brings in fans that don't support your club, then suddenly you go to the next level automatically. Yeah. So for Paris Saint Germain, it would be a, 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 an absolute worldy of a move, absolute. Sh- and 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 funny enough, and this might be the. It's not saying this is the reason, because it's not the reason. But Paris Saint Germain have got a long tradition of having Brazilian Brazilian players. Mm. If you, you know, and they've already got they got Thiago Silva there. Yeah, well, Lucas Moura. This brings you on to my next point. This, I'm getting deep here. You are. You'll appreciate this. This year, Paris Saint Germain's away kit is all yellow, and it's a tribute to their Brazilian players, right? Right. Made by it, Nike, of course. Who sponsors Neymar? Use the sh- their next big shining boy after Ronaldo. It's Neymar. Can you imagine Neymar all yellow, Paris Saint Germain kit? Playing the Champions League for PSG, all falls into place. So when I threw it out there first, he went, "Yeah, not that man." Now you've convinced everyone. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that's the Paris Saint Germain well, angle. I'm, that's well, that, that's the thing, and, and the Neymar angle, and it has been, and there's reports here that you know PSG own a confidence of landing Neymar as superstar is sold the club's vision and a chance to step out of Messi's shadow, and yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. That every time he goes back to Brazil. Me- Messi's the main player that Argentinian fella's the main player at your club do you know what I mean he's, yeah, he's yeah. the boy he's 24 he's done it he's well, been great he can yeah. go there but this is the, the and the other interesting question is for the last three years Paris Saint-Germain have been linked with Ronaldo like mm. if, if he goes yeah. anywhere he'll go there because they can <laughs> afford them and the lifestyle that yeah. will suit him and you know it, it, it's all great but it's funny if they've, if they've decided now that Ronaldo being more 32 is maybe commercially still a massive thing yeah, Paul well. obviously the Nike thing helps it's sad but it's true but maybe bringing in someone who's 24 who's still got 8 years at the highest level that may, now this may be starting to think long term about not only on the pitch but off the pitch the other thing as well if you can attack Neymar <clears throat> it's okay it's great to attack mm-hmm. Ronaldo at 32 yeah out of Real Madrid, it's, it's a bit like us attracting Rooney at 31 yeah, yeah. and on a different like we could have attracted Rooney at 26 yeah. everyone would have gone oh my god yeah, yeah. attracting him at 31 them attracting Ronaldo at 32 when he's had a few problems in Spain and he's making mm. noises it's not quite tax laws are not any better in Paris no no but I'm saying it's not quite the same thing you can pull Neymar out of Barca yeah. at age 24 people then start going these are serious don't forget Monaco won the league yeah. last season by, and the other thing is, not it, it sometimes it works like this, sometimes it doesn't, but if they are to get Neymar, because Barcelona, they're getting Mbappe, mm. then they're strengthening themselves mm. and weakening Monaco at of the course. same time. Of course. And the, I mean, and the other th- you know, the other thing about it, going back to what we've just been saying there, like, as I said, I went to see Paris Saint-Germain and I think the big star then was Paletta. Right? Oh my exactly God. who? He scored a hat-trick in the game. Didn't have any big stars, they were struggling. And then they got Zlatan and they, suddenly it was like, these mean business. And when they did that, like I, I phrased it, I was like, I kept on saying, oh, I, need to, I need to go back and watch them. Mm-hmm. And I've been back to Paris loads of times, I just, I just never went back to watch them. And it was funny, the minute Zlatan left, I was like, I'm not that bothered about going to see them again now. Because that draw, that was wasn't, the, that day, draw wasn't there to go and see them. And they've bought good players, they've bought the likes of Draxler and people like mm-hmm. that. But... They're not exactly. The they're not the pull, are they? So as soon as you got, if you got a Neymar, then suddenly you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I want to go and sit. I want to go back and watch him, and and that's the point. If you're in Paris for a weekend, then you ha- just happen to go. You know, you think, well, there's a game on Saturday. Yeah. You know, Neymar's playing. Neymar's right? playing. You can go walk up the chandeliers and buy tickets in the in the uh, shop. You you'll go. You know what I mean? It's not. You'll you'll probably go with it and. I get to watch Neymar. They're pulling, they'd be pulling that kind of fan. Exactly. Where is it at the minute? And even might even be off the cuff, it might be I wanna go to Paris to see Paris Saint Germain mm. to watch Neymar. And the the day trip as we you know, as we call them. Yeah. I mean at Barcelona you go and you're watching Suarez and you're watching yeah. Messi and you're watching Delafeu and you're watching all of that. Where is he would be the poster boy? Yeah. Yeah. Big big move, big money, big move. Um it's a big move twice, that's how much of a big move Because it is, it's, it's an absolutely massive move. Um, uh, this is a little bit sad that we can't let this go without, obviously, Bradley Lowry passed away. His funeral was last week. Um, unbelievable turn off for the funeral. Yeah, yeah. People went from everywhere. Um, you know, he made such an impact, didn't he, on, 
on everyone in football mm. I would say certainly in this country but there was messages yeah. from your Russia Dortmund all over mm. the world really but uh, just thought we had to obviously yeah no it was very sad it was uh, an unbelievable just a, story just a kid who confronted death basically because he obviously I know he was only six but he obviously knew that he wasn't very well and um, you know but I suppose the fact that when he when he was uh, mascot at Sunderland and when he was mascot at Everton, he was always smiling. So yeah, and he was always in a lot. He always felt like he was always in. His, his mum would always write that he was always in a lot of pain. And you think adults don't handle that kind of thing very well. So a, a kid. But uh, yeah, no, it was not. And it was nice that sort of the funeral didn't seem to be like a, a sad occasion. No. Even though it must have been. Yeah. The saddest occasion ever. But it's the fact seeing all the superheroes and everyone in football kits. That's. Uh, Sort of give a little bit of you got it made you remember that he was a child, child yeah, a child man. not just sort of um, I don't know it's hard to hard to describe but you know what I mean people want to hold people up as as uh, you know visions of something and and how to deal with things but he was just a little boy in the end wasn't he so no really sad but fantastic turn up and obviously see the foe there and everything I mean he's been amazing hasn't he to yeah. the foe and and all that. Let's move on to happy, well, things that'll make you smile. John Joe Shelby has come out and said, he, England, he? crying out for midfield players like him. No, he's shite. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, he's shite. I'm sorry, but he's absolute garbage of a player. He thinks he should be playing for England, but John Joe Shelby. He shouldn't, should he? He, had, he went to Liverpool and didn't do anything. He's not very good. He's 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 you know what, right? he's got to well this is what him. happens when you're in when you get stuck in Newcastle for too long. You get mm. delusions of grandeur. Honestly, they, it is though. That's that is the whole Newcastle thing, top to bottom. Delusions of grandeur. They, they stayed, you know, they stayed there for long enough, mm. and people keep on telling them how great they are. And because he's been playing in the Championship for a year, where he probably has been better than everyone else. Don't forget, this is a lad who played three or four seasons in the Premiership and made no impact. Yeah, which Do you know what I mean? Well. He plays in the Championship for one year and suddenly he thinks he's amazing. Nah, get over yourself, lad. He's absolutely weird, isn't he? Um, but that's John Joe Shelby. He, he was good in Harry Potter. I was going to say, if he went down to like Harry Potter land, he could, he could make a kill him. Yeah. Stand outside, getting Literally. pictures with the kids. New career for you. Man. New career. There you go, cream it off the top. Uh, in the looks as though he's about to join Leicester. Mm. Would you have had a nibble at him for Everton? That'd be cannibalism. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. To be fair, it would be. I don't know because he's a good player, but and he always look he always look good coming off the bench. But he's one of those players. Is he just like a Sky Sports player? Is he just someone on match of the day players? Is he just someone that looks good? Because you only see him when you're only seeing him for a little bit on the highlights. I don't know. I don't know mm. what he really offers. You know, as an Evertonian, we've bought Sanzo. We don't really know what offers yet, what he's going to offer us yet. I mean, we do need another centre forward. But, but for me, do we need his kind, his kind of centre forward? So, I mean, it's a good move for Leicester because um, they can sell his father, you know. Um, but I don't know. For me, I find not I'm not saying it's desperate from Leicester. It's probably the kind of play they should be after. But I don't see too many other play, people scrambling around for them. Mm. Um, That's shit. You put that buyback. And there's a buyback right? clause, and I'm not massively into buyback clauses. When you're a club with the level we're trying to get to, yeah. because that just screams That's loan. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. just seems it just screams loan, doesn't it? Yeah. So because um, even if he does have, a, if he has a good season. City will buy him back and probably sell him on again. Again. Yeah. So, okay, fair enough. That's it. What do you think about these friendlies, pre-season friendlies where Premier League teams are playing Premier League? Teams? I know it's happened sporadically, but like today, is it today? Manchester We've got Derby. Manchester Derby in New York. You it's know, not, we saw not in New York. Uh, it's in Houston. In Houston, so that's top of my head. Yeah. Oh, nothing. I'm just, not reading it. I just, I just knew that. I'm not reading it. Otherwise, um, no, it's in Houston. I think. I think we're gonna to have to get used to them, right? Listen, I remember Merseyside Derby in two thousand and seven. Was it two thousand seven? There was one at Goodison, wasn't it? It was nil nil. It was like two thousand and eight, two thousand and seven. Um, what was it Anfield? I don't. Know. Anyway, I'm, I'm just I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, 
it happens and what we're going to find is right what, what was that suit what was the reference of the what I'm saying it was a Mayside derby it was a friendly pre-season friendly we played like one of these stupid tournaments and we ended up playing it was a nil-nil draw it was around 98 97 98 2000 so 90, yeah when we played was it 2007 three mobile we even played in 2007 no, no, 97, 97, Team mobile thing. Uh, yeah, so it's happened before. Um, we did it with Leicester two years ago. Mm. But the odd one, these are in. Yeah, but this is this is the world we live in now. Yeah. You, if you were a fan of Manchester United, right, you're in, you live in the States. Right, you just watched some Battle L- LA Galaxy, right? Mm. Sound, nice one. Good luck to you. But then you want to see them play in Man City or uh, someone you want. Why don't you know? Why don't those people deserve to see a game like that? Why did they only deserve to see Man United playing someone? Oh, no, that's great for the fan. I'm talking about from a, a team. What difference does it make? Well, if you go to, do you want us to play Liverpool? I don't want them to play team. Liverpool, but from a from a business point of view, I understand why it's good. If you if you if you're involved in, think about if you're involved in another sport in America, baseball, American football, basketball. Who do they play in preseason friendlies? They only play the other teams, well, don't they? Well, MLS do. Exactly. MLS so play all the space. They've got no one else teams. to play. Yeah. So they play each other. Now, the teams will know, right, pre-season, don't go nuts. But that 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 trophy that we were lucky to be in a couple yeah. of years ago is becoming sort of like the world's pre- elitist. elitist. Yeah. And it is elitist, but it's elitist for a reason, because they want the best versus mm-hmm. the best. And I suppose you've got to break into that bracket if you want to be part of it. But if you're a fan, you want to see your team, or not even if you're a fan, just a football. If you're fan. a football fan and someone says Man City playing Man United tonight in Houston, I'm going. Go. I'm there. You know what I mean? I don't support them. I mean, you'd go, wouldn't you? You know, what I mean? if someone said to someone said to us, Real Madrid playing, playing Barcelona, Barcelona yeah. at Goodison tonight, are you going? Yeah, yeah. Of course you're going. Yeah. Of course you're going. I went to watch Brazil versus Japan at Goodison. Yes, so did that. Exactly. Matt Ronaldo. There you go. So met him the day before. Well, so there you go. You know what I mean. You you you, you want to see high class football, and you as a fo- as a as as two Evertonians that are always moaning about Everton becoming a global brand mm. and trying to sell shirts. I would want to see. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to play Liverpool, but I'd be happy to play a Man United or a Man City. Or yeah, a Chelsea. no, it's just because they, they just they don't becoming. I think pre season taking on more of a. More importance now well, than ever before. It's pre-season. Is this going to replace the thir- the thirty ninth game well, I idea? Does. But I see. I've just got a feeling it won't. See, I've I've had this idea for ages, and I'm, I just don't understand why the Premier League haven't jumped haven't all over my yet. my idea. But I, look at this. They're doing this thing in at the moment, aren't they, with the uh, the Premier League Cup? Now they always take yeah, it to yeah, Asia, don't yeah. they? Now, if if the Premier League just said. We're taking eight teams to the states, right? And we're having our own like cup, inter, yeah. inter like preseason cup. It, it'd be huge. Mm. It would be huge. And I don't understand why they haven't already jumped on it. I really don't. I don't. don't you know, just pick the phone. I'll, I'll, the ideas are here all day, but I just don't understand why why the Premier League as a brand haven't jumped up. Mm. Like th- they could have four. They've got four teams in of an age at the moment. They can have another six teams or or whatever in in America right now, doing a little, doing a doing a tournament that goes, you know, all over, and could be just smashing it to death. It 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 it's it's it strikes me as short term thinking that they haven't done that because the that's potential. one in it, like you say, one in Asia and one in America, exactly. and then that's that takes care of twelve twelve teams are going because there's Liverpool, West Brom. Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace and Leicester, and, Leicester and, 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 and obviously, Liverpool, I mean, obviously Liverpool are the big draw over there. So you you go to America and so if you got if you got like GFD. you could have you could have I don't know you could have like <coughs> again I'm talking at least like the Swansea there at the moment, aren't they? But you could have like have the eye. But who's to say you said like you get the top eight? Mm. So anyone who knows, and, and it sounds stupid, but if you so if you finish in the top eight, you're in this. You're in this tournament, and then obviously say we say we were in it. We could say this summer, like we don't want to be in it because we've got UEFA commitments, so we can't do it. And it goes to the next one, mm. and, and and you get a wedge for it. Yeah. You get a wedge for it. You get you get to, you go get it on FIFA pre-season. They offer you got, like seven million. But imagine, to play in that. imagine you went over, right? Imagine you went over Premier League. You set up in let's say you set up in like one city for a day, 
and then you go somewhere else and you go somewhere else. say like three or four cities as well and for those two days that you're there there's open training sessions there's mm coaching training sessions with coaches from the clubs there's a like meet and greets with players or ex-players there's like a Premier League roadshow thing which we've seen in, in other countries at different times you've got all the merchandise in there as well come on it yeah. would be huge event and I'm very surprised that the Premier League haven't jumped all oh do you know another brand the, U, the, the UEFA Champions League brand right grab six teams off the champ who are going to be in the Champions League and go right. We're gonna go. Well, I, I, I don't understand why they're not doing this. It's just uh, whether they don't want to be involved or whether the. But I mean, the Champions League one might, might be a little bit too far, but the Premier League one. It'd the be Premier massive. League one is the because all the clubs would be like most of them anyway. Like some of them might say no, we want to do our own thing and we will make more money. But you can't tell me if you didn't take any eight Premier League teams to America in an organised tour that it wouldn't do very very well. Yeah, definitely. Finally, before we wrap it up, Pep Guardiola's come out basically said what we've said many times about the transfer window shutting before mm. the first game of the season. Yeah. In favour? Yeah. Should be. Should. If the season starts on well, starts on a Friday this year, then it should be shut on the Wednesday, as far as I'm concerned. Then everyone knows where they are, there's no messing about, there's no there's no unrest for the for the couple of weeks. So that'll be like the 9th of August it's shut. Yeah, I be. I, I think it should. I think it should. I think Everyone knows the 9th of August. Then it's deadline day. Yeah, that's still deadline get day. That Sky would still get their silly little yellow tie yeah. day and all that, wouldn't he? They'd still get all of the hype and everything around it. But then you know, then that when that shuts at midnight, that's your squad. So yeah, we know January. We can't do nothing about January. But you know, then for the next four months, that's our team yeah. and day one. No, yeah, but in three weeks, he mightn't be yeah. there. Or he, you know. I think it's really unsettled. I don't understand why. I don't understand why we don't do it unless it's just because the rest of Europe won't fall in line with it. But then some windows are open when ours shuts anyway, mm. aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Some still open even though ours are shut for it. So I don't know. I just think that the more it's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum now, I think the more people like mm. Pep that talk about it, the more likely it is to come in. But it's a no brainer to me. I think it should be shut and then everyone can go right we're, we're here now me if you know with a player I'm yeah. here now so I suppose the only the only reason is because and it's only small a small reason if you've got if you're in the Champions League or the Europa League qualifiers and you don't make it into the Champions League and you feel like then you need to sell somebody to compensate but then that's life that's isn't life it? isn't it could have that player and, and need to sell him in January yeah, because yeah. you've gone out in the group no, I, I just think for the sake of that too, because we always say the season doesn't really start till January, eh, till January, till September. Til September. It doesn't because because then you know what your squad is. Mm. You get into that international weekend, the windows just shut, and you know what your squad is when they come back, and that's when the the league really starts picking up. Yeah. So, yeah, no brainer. Fully in favour of it. Let us know in the comments section below any of the stories we've talked about today. Give us your opinion. You normally do, and we love it. Thanks for watching the footy show. See you soon on Toffee TV.